Let's continue on CRRT in ICU. Now, we put the temporary dialysis catheter and we confirm that with X-ray as we talk, we talked about the dialysis catheter and the initial, um, uh, the very first few videos in ICU when we start talking about equipments. We confirm that on chest X-ray. Now the nephrologist decided to put this patient on CRRT. There is different modalities of the CRRT itself. And this is not our decision. This is the nephrologist decision, but just to give an idea, is the nephrologist gonna use something called CVVH, continuous venovenous hemofiltration. And here mainly, we don't use dialysate. So we're not doing really the like regular hemodialysis. Basically, we use the hydrostatic pressure to move water, plasma water, across the membrane. So no dialysate, but that means patient losing fluid, right? And the rate is around 20 to 25 mil per kg per hour. So it's a significant amount. So this patient may need, or they will need to replace IV fluid. It's important to know because they may come, oh, the patient is getting more hypotensive now. It's simply because the patient is getting volume depleted. You ask what modality the patient is on CVVVH. Okay, maybe we need to give more fluids. He should be getting replaced IV fluid unless you do, you want to take more fluids. And that's the ins and outs, how much the patient is getting and then how much I want to send back to the patient. Maybe the patient is getting 200 cc to the machine. I want to send 150 cc back if I want to remove fluids. But critically ill patients, sometimes you don't want to do that. So they should receive IV fluids. Okay, so that's the first modality. The second one is called CVVHD. And from its name is continuous venovenous hemodialysis. So we're not doing hemofiltration, we're doing hemodialysis. So there is dialysate. And here we're using the diffusion method through the dialysate to get rid of um, solutes and there is minimum if any fluid removal so there is no need to replace IV fluid so the fluid removal or the fil uh, is and the filtration is really uh, minimal it's kind of if there is any two to eight mil per minute so you don't use this modality to remove fluids in fluid overload patients while to clear things and clear um, uh, solutes and that stuff. And the third one is basically a combination of those CVVHDF, which give you a combination of both. The fourth modality is called SCUF, which is slow continuous ultra filtration. This is the main modality. The only use for this is to aggressive fluid removal. So if you have somebody with severe fluid overload and you wanna get rid uh, of fluid as much as you can using CRT, this is the modality we should use. Now, as is most of this dealt by nephrology. They pick the modality based on the patient status. So we don't get really much headache of it. But once the patient is put on CRRT, you will notice we need labs Q6 hours. And labs mainly electrolytes, CMP. Okay? That's the first thing. The second thing, any patient on CRRT needs anticoagulation, as we said. And the anticoagulation can be done by heparin 
or citrate infusion and we said the citrate sorry a citrate basically chelates potassium bind sorry bind calcium and calcium is essential for coagulation now because of this patients who are receiving citrate needs calcium infusion supplements to replace to prevent hypocalcemia and again this is there is a protocol and the, the, the nephrologists usually take care of that just to let you know and be familiar with that complication that can happen mainly the mechanical complication is the clotting of the filter that's the one we really don't like because you have to change the filter you have to stop the process and it takes time to fix it sometimes now if the patient is getting more hypotensive of course check are we removing too much fluid then we need to keep the fluid even so Remember that term, uh, is the patient even or negative or positive? Is basically in the fluid. The fluid that goes to the machine and come back to the patients. Is it even what goes here, comes back here, or it's negative? That means we get rid of some uh, to help with the fluid removal if we need, right? Uh, so that's one thing you may need to give fluid back. The other thing is the patient getting more acidotic. Okay, we need to check on that. And the citrate, remember, again, this is a nephrology decision, they know that. We should not use it with liver failure. It's very important to remember that or somebody with cardiogenic shock and lactic acidosis, uh, we should not use that. If you notice that the patient requiring more and more calcium, still calcium is low, we may go into citrate toxicity. Again, I, I doubt we'll have any uh, issue with that. I just want you to give an idea of the CRRT. But remember, if you want to get more details, there's plenty of videos in YouTube, I think, and you can just read. Or if you think to go into nephrology, um, things a bit more complicated complicated than this this is just to give you a general idea so while you run a patient on crrt these are things that you should expect if any complication any problem talk to the nephrologist and don't play with this machine on your own please thank you thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released glad to have you on board